Here is the David Structured Light Scanner that I'm going to be listing for sale on eBay. Uh, this video is not professional, that's for sure, but I wanted to show the actual scanner and use. So many people that list these for sale on eBay simply use stock photos. And I want to show you this scanner in action rather than just showing you a stock photo that I copied off the internet. So this is anything but professional here. But I'm going to just run through a few things and see if I can do a quick scan here uh, in under 10 minutes. This one is branded uh, HP. So this is one of the crossover units while some of the things on the box and the packaging still show that it's the David S3 standard structured light. All the literature is marked HP on it. You have the K132 ASUS projector and the professional camera and I have it on a tripod right now in my not so professional scanning area here. So the tripod is obviously included and I also have the desk lever set up that I was going to put over here but uh, that never happened. So what I've done here is I have the scanning uh, calibration plate. Like I said, this is not professional set up and we're going to go through a quick calibration here. I'm going to turn off my light overhead and I have things here pretty much pretty much ready to go. I have the 120 millimeter scan area selected and this is the this little guy here is the cross is the center of the pattern area so I put that in the middle again I'm not professional at this this is just what I have I've done and I've just done a few scans but I had no trouble uh, getting this set up to work I have it focused in get the picture nice and sharp get your patterns to fill up most everything here it's okay if, if you're not if you cut off some of the edge or something like that that's okay these are these dots here are the main thing that you need to pick up and at least four of the other surrounding dots on your computer and this computer is nothing special in fact this is one that uh, somebody spilled some soda on and the keyboard's still sticky I cleaned it up and uh, seems to be working fine so in the setup area here I won't go into this too much I have up here selected the David SLS 3. I don't have a turntable. This is my turntable. I think I might be uh, including this. This is nothing special here. But uh, I put rubber pads on the bottom so it doesn't slip and put markings around the outside so I know how far to turn it. Uh, David Cam 4 is selected and on uh, your, your calibration scale you put in here, which is the 120 which is what I'm using right now. And you set your brightness so that these don't go touch against or outside of the blue area here. And this little screen is really nice. Oh, by the way, this is the pro version of the five. I have this on here just so I don't lose my, my dongle. This is the pro version five software. And in this area here, if you're in the red, this helps you with the setup too as far as your brightness goes. If I was to increase the brightness right now of the projector, you're going to see how that area turns red. You don't want your calibration plate red. What I like to do, and what I've read on a lot of the forums, is to keep the aperture open as far as possible on the camera and lower your brightness here rather than having the brightness up 
and opening up the aperture, you're going to get a much sharper picture by allowing more as much light into the camera as possible. So I pretty much turn the projector brightness down. Now everything's in focus right now. I can go over here and turn the lens. Probably won't see this, but I'm focusing in the camera. Once you have your camera set, once everything's set over here, leave it as it is. You don't want to change your focus. You don't want to change your aperture and you don't want to change your focus on the camera. I've seen some people change your focus on the camera. Don't do that. What you can do is change the angle of this after it's calibrated, but you, you don't want to change your distance between your setup and where your turntable is going to sit. And I have this mark here so I know where to set the turntable. So I'll keep the camera over here and I'm going to click on calibrate to show you how easy it is to calibrate this. Calibrate. It's going to go through its patterns. And since I'm at the six minute point in the video here, I might end up stopping around 10 or 11 minutes and split this up into another video. through its pattern selection for the calibration, color, calibrating, and there we go. When you get this, everything's set up. Your checkerboard here, they all line up with each dot, and in your circles here, you have the corners in each one that's it we are calibrated and that's pretty much what you see there you don't have to worry about that at that point we will adjust the brightness over here if we need to so let me get the calibration board out of the way we are set I will just set that there now we're gonna take our turntable here and I'm going to place it on my dot, and I have a piece of tape here already, so I know how far to turn this. I'm going to do a series of eight scans. So I'm just placing it on one there. Now, we might have to adjust it to get the uh, get our target, our scanning item, in the center. And bring up the brightness a little bit again you can see the red there we're not good yet oops that's too much there there we go we don't have to worry about the background we're concerned with our object to be scanned. Let me go right into the scanning section here. And we're going to move this a little bit. Like I said, you can move this now, but you can't change your distance. I'm going to center the item to be scanned in the middle, and I put that X, that target X area, right in the center. Of our item that we are scanning. There we go. I have it set up for manual sequence of scans in the free motion mode and these are all default settings here. I haven't really played with much of the, the settings so I can't give you any advice on different 
quality settings. I'm going to go through a rotation here to make sure that I'm in frame and I see there that I'm out a little bit so I'm going to need to move this again and I'm at the 10 minute mark so I think I'm going to end here shortly and then we'll go through a quick series of scans so you can see the scanning process which is really cool okay so I'll continue this in video number two and we'll go from there and thanks for watching